I don't think you guys realize it, but most of the time I'm in my dark, dank dungeon of a studio recording for you, so all the stuff that I show you could be way better in natural sunlight. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? We are just rolling these out, ain't we? We are just rolling these out. Welcome to another episode of Glazer View, where I take glazes off the shelf and I test them for you so you can see how they come out before you buy them yourself in stores. In today's video, we are testing Midnight Run from the Amico Company. This is from their new line of glazes called Potter's Choice Flux. This one is PCF-3. Keep in mind, today's video is sponsored by Amico, which is how we have these glazes so early. Thank you very much, Amico. I will put the links down below if you want to get any of these Potter's Choice glazes. Some of you doubt me, right? You're like, oh, he doctored the glaze. That's why it comes out so good ever since I showed you the brush version. So just, just to make sure you know, fresh bottle. Fresh bottle, ladies, gents, and furries. As usual, we have our redstone clay body and our white clay body. This one here is a stoneware clay body. It is not porcelain, but it usually does just as well for a textile. These two are gonna be poured, but we are also going to do a standard brush and no brush one for you. Generally speaking, the way that I use my glazes, especially my bottle glazes, that I will dip or pour them on. And this has been working for me so far, but a lot of you want to see a brushed on version down in the comments below. So what we started doing is making a poured on and a brushed on version just to see which one is better or which one's more preferred in comparison. We're also gonna be doing our over and under glazes. So this one's gonna be PCF-3 with a glaze on top of it. And this one's gonna be PCF-3 with a glaze underneath it. I think I have some kind of, oh, th that's not it. Ah, here we go. I have a glaze they gave me quite some time ago. It's iron from their Celadon line, C-36. This one is a bit more translucent, but I think this one here is not translucent. Right? I think I think it's not. I'm not sure. I've never tested it before, which is which is technically why we're here, I guess. I'm going to see if these two marry up real well and see if they do a good over under. With that being said, let's get on with the glazing. Oh my God, that is thick. That is so thick right there. You can see huge clumps of it right there. That is, oh my God. Listen, listen, I like them thick, but th this is probably one of the few times you're gonna hear me say, that might be a little too much. I'm gonna have to wait at least like five minutes for this to dry. I, I, I should have added water to this. One of the few times I, I should have added water to this. Every Potter instinct in my mind right now is like, hold it there forever until it dries. But it's so thick <laughs> that it's not it hasn't dried for like seven minutes 
and my forearms are getting tired. The butt big enough to grab onto? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. We're gonna glaze it just like this. We're, we're gonna tiptoe around death here. I can already hear you. I can already hear 12 of you being like, why don't you just brush it on? Because shut up is why I refuse to brush it on. I already do a brush test style for you. Isn't that enough? People in hell want ice water too, I bet, huh? And as we usually do, let's talk about what we're gonna put into the kiln before we put it in. This one here is our white stoneware test style with PCF-3 on it. It is poured on, there's nothing else. This one is the same way, except for it's our redstone clay body. So this is just our white and our brown test styles like normal. These two over here, however, these two are the brushed and poured on test style. They are both the exact same clay body. In fact, they are brother clay bodies. The only difference is that they're recycled, so they're neither white or dark clay bodies. That one of them is poured on, while the other one is brushed on. Now, help me keep track of this down in the comments below, because this one, I'm 100% sure, is the one that's poured on, while this one is brushed on. And the only reason I know that is because the brushed on one is slightly taller than the poured on one. And that's the, that's the only reason I know that. Also, I think if I did this correctly, yeah, I did. So this one right here is a fully glazed bottom. This one's gonna be our poured on test style. And this one, I think, yeah, I didn't brush the bottom of this one at all, just so I could make sure that I could tell the difference in between the two. This one has a naked bottom, as for this one has a fully clothed bottom, essentially. This one says that they don't do it for attention and they take the pictures and they delete them just because they want to see how they look in their new pants. As for this one, keep saying that they don't do it for attention, but they are posting it on the gram right after. Either one of them could just buy a mirror, but it, it, you know, we're not gonna get into it. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. So the first two test we're gonna look at are our white and brown test aisles. The white glaze came out pretty good here, but I can see kind of where I double dipped it here. So you see the entire body here is just one coat and then I double dipped the top just to make sure I got enough glaze on there and you can see a bit of a difference here at the top in between this portion and this portion down here. This sort of looks like one of their other glazes, but you can totally tell there's a bit more texture in the glaze body itself. Let's take a look at our brown test style now. This red clay test style has a lot more texture on it, but you can see very clearly wherever there's a breakage in the texture, there's these kind of dark bits, and then whenever it's flat, or at least it has a bit more room to move, you can see it turns that type of melty midnight blue that we're talking about on the bottle here. It's a major contrast in between the porcelain white clay body here and the red stone or brown clay body here. You can really see how the darkness of the clay body affects the actual glaze itself. It doesn't really seem to be that apparent, especially underneath the direct light. This looks pure blue. This looks more remnant of a floating blue, but you can really see where it breaks black, and I like that a lot. You can really see the consistency in this product. This is a fantastic thing for the product itself. You guys know I love my consistency. If I use a glaze, I wanna know it comes out the exact same way every single time. To boot, I even put it on some dragon fruit clay. You can see that clearly right here. The dragon fruit clay body is kind of the competitor that the industrial mineral company makes in Sacramento, California to sandstone buff. You can leave it raw. You barely have to glaze it, right? You can really just dip it and put something inside of it. I wanted to know how it would come out on that clay body, so I put that right here. And the main difference is that you can really see the clay body itself affects the streakiness of PCF-3, this midnight blue here. As for this clay body, doesn't have too many of those streaks. You can really see how streaky this gets on this clay body specifically.
And look, I don't know what kind of person you are. I have no idea what kind of stuff you're making in your homestead or in your studio. But I like this. I love the fact that there's these little blue streaks that go into this clay body every single time that I use it and it transforms glazes, especially from Amico and the PCF line, to a completely different glaze body. Like this, this is just, it, at least in my eyes, worlds apart. This has way more texture to it, but this has no texture and way more streaks. So I, I actually prefer this technically, if I'm being honest with you. And just because I am who I am, I also tested the consistency of this dragon fruit clay body and PCF-3 on a bowl as well. And you can clearly see I got these streaks on the same exact type of product. I get a lot of people asking where they can get this dragon fruit clay body because it seems to be really popular in the Sacramento area where I live. So I'm going to put a link down below to where you can get this clay body in the description below of this video, just so you guys can get your hands on it. I'm pretty sure Imco delivers the place that I teach at and buy this clay body from because it seems to do a lot of work when it comes to other glazes. I mean, seriously, you just put this clay body with the glazes that you've been using forever and ever, and it transforms it from just like this to this. There's way more streakiness and way more texture in the glaze itself by just using a different clay body. And that's why I always stress that you should test things on white and brown clay body, as well as other variations of clay bodies, because you get a completely different effect. Now this last one is a little bit weird. It's the only combination test style that we did for PCF-3 from Amico. This one is a bowl with PCF-3 mixed with C-36 iron on the very top of it. And it looks beautiful, uh, but I, I, I doubt I can duplicate this. I think I got really lucky with this one. Oh, man, it's too specialized. You can't even see the texture. Okay, we're gonna have to go outside. I am going to commit great crime. I don't think you guys realize it, but most of the time I'm in my dark, dank dungeon of a studio recording for you, so all the stuff that I show you could be way better in natural sunlight. To be honest with you, I'm just hoping, wishing, wishing on a prayer. It's just way too shiny to show you effectively. I went outside for a bit and hopefully that caught some of it. But this is a good look. You can see me in the camera. Hi. I'm sorry I'm overweight. I mean, you can't really see it, but I, I am. This combination of PCF-3 along with C-36 is actually gorgeous, but it's so difficult because it has this kind of dark galaxy tint to it that you can see everything inside of the reflection. So it's really difficult to get a clear shot for you unless I have very specialized lighting. And I have natural lighting on top of this little light that you see shining on it right now. And I can change the color of the lighting. So it's, it's like, I don't know what to do at this point, but trust me, this thing is, this thing is beautiful. I'm gonna give it to one of my patrons and maybe they could take a better picture of it. Or maybe I'll put a picture of it on my Instagram if the lighting's not acting up that day. But trust me, this combination is gorgeous. It just seems like the iron wants to take over the blue and the blue fought it back so hard that there's tiny specks of blue from the PCF-3 that comes out of the iron and it makes it look like a deep dark galaxy with a tiny bit of brown attached to it. I'm gonna see if I can get one more shot for you. Please ignore the shine. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today for the review of PCF-3 Midnight Run from Amico. This is their new Potter's Choice Flux line. I'm very happy with this. It really delivers what it says it'll deliver. It doesn't have too much variation as far as difference from white clay bodies to mixtures, but I think that's because cobalt and blues in general are so strong that they either overtake a lot of the colors that they're put on, or they get overtaken by something stronger than it, which... I mean, you're essentially either getting one or the other, right? Cobalts are so strong in glaze chemistry that if you put blue over anything, it usually overtakes it, and it's very present in the glaze body. And if you find something stronger than the blue, then like, you're not gonna get any blue. And that's almost what happened with the last combination we're seeing. But this thing sure does deliver. It really delivers the color that it says it delivers. The main difference for me is that I'm using a different clay body, so I'm getting a bit of streakiness in my final product, which I like personally. I'm a very organic, pottery art style lover. 
The main difference for me is that I'm using a different clay body altogether with little specks of streaky things in it. So the product that you're seeing here on the bottle versus what I'm getting on this specific clay body of dragon fruit is only different because I'm using a different clay body. But the rest of them seem to hit exactly where they're supposed to. Thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. Don't forget to click all the YouTube buttons, leave a comment down below for what you would like to see next on the channel, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. I need to make friends with the glaze chemist on the Amico team. Like whoever, how many ever glaze chemists they got back there, I need to make friends with them and the person in the naming department so that we can make a red glaze with the same base called Demon's Run and we could make it a Doctor Who reference and we could do a collab with Doctor Who and then all the little neurodivergent nerds are gonna be like, oh my God, it's a Doctor Who glaze. Boom, right there. That's your marketing for the next week. Thank you for your patronage. That was, weirdly enough, a lot of work for that one bowl. I, I tried like 12 different things just now.